Join us today as we explore the Blunt Springs area to uncover evidence of the once affluent Blunt Springs Hotel. So why here and what makes you think the hotel was right there? Watch until the end to see what historical discovery our team made. What is that? Well, we're gonna... Uh, yes, it is. What? Yeah. Hey guys, this is William with Exploring History. This channel is all about forgotten history by visiting locations where history happened. If you're interested in something like that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the like button. But before you do that, let's get started with this video. Today, we will be traveling about 35 miles north of Birmingham to explore the ruins of the Blunt Springs and the main hotel also known as the Jackson House or Blunt Springs Hotel. I have seen pictures on several history Facebook groups and I'm curious to see what is left. Blunt Springs, Alabama was a thriving community, a center for the elite, rich, and famous. It served as a place for healing, as well as a social gathering spot for important businessmen and industrialists of the New South. People came to enjoy the health-giving water from the bubbling sulfur springs and enjoy dancing, spirits, and especially legal gambling. While exploring these ruins, I knew that this location could not have been the Jackson House. By comparing the location with the picture of the Jackson House, I realized I am on top of the hill and the Jackson House is clearly located on the ground close to the train tracks. I was unable to find any evidence that train tracks existed at this location. Leaving the rooms, I knew I had to reach out to someone that knew the history of Blunt Springs. I was able to get in touch with the author of the book Blunt Springs, Alabama's Fountain of Youth to get a better insight of this forgotten history and hopefully find the real location of the Jackson House. Several weeks later, I met with author Greg Burden. To learn more about the history of this community, we began exploring the springs, the feature that evoked much of the development in that area. Perhaps the first specific historical reference to Blunt Springs began with David Crockett. David Crockett spent time recuperating from a fever by a set of sulfur springs in approximately 1815. By 1825, Blunt Springs had become increasingly popular with social leaders from Huntsville. So much so that a weekly stage run between the two places by L. Morgan and Sons was established. The area really took off by 1828 when J. H. Harris and J. Perrine bought the property and built a hotel and several cottages near the springs. They then started to advertise as the most comfortable and pleasant resort for anyone that desired to pursue health and amusement. It was not long until Blunt Springs became a noted summer resort and was patronized by the more wealthy families of the South. This is the main focus of the spring yard, and this is where the gazebo. I have a photograph, compliments of Samford University in their archives, of this spot from 1866. This rock was here as the step up to it, and here there was elevated about a Another step up was a gazebo. But this rock has stood here the entire time. This is crazy. Yeah. See, what I enjoy is, this is for me always, the closest I can get to history. Yeah. Standing yeah. where people stood back in the day. It's yeah. like, almost like traveling back in time. To determine if this was the real location was not very difficult. We had so much evidence to compare with old pictures. The rock wall that stood the test of time was as clear as day in pictures. Even in this layout, you can see where the gazebo stood and the waterhole number one close to the gazebo is still visible today. So they were trying to get this to be very Central Parkish, I guess. Okay. Because one of the main things you did here was socialize and the ladies would come out here and there, there was always a parade about 10 o'clock they would come from the hotel and walk down through here together and they'd all sit out here and 
enjoy themselves. So it's really just to socialize, get together, and... The main idea was some came for their health, but mostly they came to see and be seen. But this right here is one of the last pieces we have still from those days. In the early 1830s, the property was sold to a Mr. George Goff, a wealthy New Yorker. Mr. Goff's business ventures ultimately failed, and in a few years, the property was sold and bought by Parish and Company of New York. The property remained in their hands until bought by J.F.B. Jackson in 1872. Greg and I walked several feet up a hill next to the springs to look for any evidence that would show us the golf house stood here at one point. We're standing on the site that was the original larger hotel that was built here in Blunt Springs. This was where the golf house was built in the 1830s. Below us, we had springs are just right next to us. And so this was a great place for the folks to come in and do their socialize and then go get a healthy drink of sulfur and then chase it with two or three bottles of bourbon. We're standing beside the driveway that came up here to the golf house. Okay. And you can see still evidence of it through the woods here where there, it's still leveled out and all, but it makes a circuitous route up here because you can't drive horses straight up the hill. And you can still see remnants of the foundation around here. So this was probably the corner of the building right here. These look like rocks that were piled up to uh, be the uh, corner of the building here. Sure. Because it starts, stops here and stops over here, so yes. the building would have been here. On our way back, Greg pointed out to me what appeared to be stairs. I can't say this for, with absolute certainty, but I believe this was part of a stairway that led from the hotel down to the springs because these fine ladies in their big dresses couldn't just tromp through the woods like we've been doing. Plus, it would make sense having something that connects the hotel to the springs because right. it, it was a selling point. That was the selling point. Yeah. <laughs> this looks like carved out rock for steps to me. Absolutely. In fact, right there you can see the uh, chisel work. Of course, it's glossed over now because yeah. of the years. Wow. Colonel J.F.B. Jackson built a resort hotel, the Jackson House, in 1872, around the Sulphur Springs. The same year, train tracks were built to bring in patrons from all over the state. It didn't take off until in 1887. Jackson sold the land and hotel to James Sloss and his brother Max Sloss, who renamed it Blunt Springs Hotel. This is when it became one of the finest hotels in the southeast and was known for its hospitality and for the highest quality of food and festivities. Now, I was curious to find out where the hotel once stood and look for any evidence we could find. So why here, and what makes you think the hotel was right there? The hotel was here, but first of all, I can show you the foundations of it. Greg and I entered the wooded area on the corner of Highway 31 and County Road 7, and it did not take us long before we found evidence that could have been the old Blunt Springs Hotel. This could be part of the foundation. Okay. Because the place burned down, so there's, that would be the only thing left. There's all kinds of neat little paths and stuff up through here. This could have been something that we had like a could have been a column there. Yeah. This is amazing. And most people don't realize this is where the uh, actual hotel was. The yeah, right here on the corner. Corner of 31 and Highway Set County 7 on the south side. Because of that's 7. very, I mean, you can tell oh, yeah. it was man-made. Oh, it's definitely man-made. Right now we're standing in the area that was known as the basement. It was kind of top secret. Not just anybody could come in here. You either had to be a male or a male, no children, no women allowed. Oh, wow. One thing about this happened in Blunt Springs that didn't happen anywhere else in Alabama at this time was gambling and any kind of liquor you wanted was totally legal and available, even though most of the state was dry. This was added in at some point. I don't know when exactly. Okay. But the reason it was legal here was the governor, the lieutenant governor, the U.S. senator from Alabama, three-fourths of the legislature all were here partying hardy. So this was the place to come because anything they wanted to do was here. 
As we move toward the mountain house, also seen in this picture, we continue to see more evidence that supported that the Jackson House once stood in this location. This is part of the grounds around the hotel, and this rock wall is something that's left from the landscaping that was done in 1887 by Lux. And this was for the fine ladies and gentlemen to promenade up and down to the mountain house. While filming, my wife spotted something. What is that? What is what? Oh, a piece of crockery. That is old. Yeah, that may have been part of the Blunt Springs plates. Well, we're going to... Uh, yes, it is. What? Yeah, yes, I know that Here. pattern. I've seen yeah. it. What do, you what do you make out of this? I have to get my eyes to see. It's the manufacturing from... It says something about war, W-A-R. War, uh, Warrington, maybe, or something. I don't know whoever made the... Still got a great finish. Yeah. There was not much information on the mountain house but the evidence we discovered was amazing. Looking right up there, we're getting close to the top, but you can see the edge of what was probably the lawn for the mountain house. Now, how they got up and down with food and all that stuff, I have no idea. But uh, the piers for the mountain house are still up there. Blunt Springs was a thriving community when the Blunt Springs Hotel was open for business and drew in thousands of visitors, like U.S. President Teddy Roosevelt, and famous actress Lillian Russell at the time. A lot of parties were held up here. The okay. first floor, I think this was a two-story building if I remember right, but the first floor was where the parties were. It was the big open area and then above it were the rooms. And if I remember correctly, I read somewhere there were 20 rooms in the mountain house. Wow. But you can see the piers are still here. That is amazing, yes. Yeah, and uh, so well constructed. We see these piers here. That's why I felt like it went out over that. We could see some stones down there where there are probably other piers. Yeah. But uh, this is where the mountain house stood. And it's, if you didn't have all the trees in the way, you'd have quite a commanding view from here. I bet. But there was nothing as grand as this in the state of Alabama, more than likely, because of the people that came here. We continued to explore the area of the mountain house and discovered more evidence that suggested that we were at the right place. With the evidence in mind and comparing the location with the pictures, we knew this had to be the original location of the Jackson House, also known as Blum Springs Hotel, and the Mountain House located behind the main hotel. In 1914, the L&N closed the rail line that ran in front of the hotel, and the following year, on June 3, 1915, the hotel burned to the ground. In the following decades, Blunt Springs was all but forgotten by the outside world. Although it would remain a popular spot for locals through the 1960s, by the end of the 1980s, nature had all but reclaimed what was once a grand resort destination. We were able to get this piece of history identified with the help of members from two Facebook history groups. Within 24 hours, we had that logo identified as Paris White, Crescent Pottery, Warranted. I am convinced that this piece of pottery was an original piece from the Blunt Springs Hotel. Crescent Pottery was from the Trenton, New Jersey Company, and it was used sometime before 1903. If you want to learn more about Blunt Springs, make sure you click the link below and order the book, Blunt Springs, Alabama's Fountain of Youth by Craig Burden. It will give you the full history, more than we just covered in this video. If you want to learn more about exploring history, make sure you support this channel by subscribing to this channel, like this video, and leave a positive comment. I can't wait to see you next time when we explore history.